Good morning. How are you doing, sir? Very good. How are you? Fantastic. My father would call your book a modern day Western because he loved reading military books because he served in World War II and he would read those books. He says, this is a Western. This is what I call a Western. (laughs) He is a good man and a smart man. (laughs) (laughs) To, To bring this to life on the pages, I can't imagine how you got to search your soul and go into those areas of thought. And, and then, because on this side of it, we're going, Oh my God. (laughs) <laughs> I, I think to answer that question, um, most of it is all from my head. <laughs> and, and and I was far, far enough away, so to speak, several – I was with CIA for 26 years. And um, what I did, the vast majority of my time there was um, protect the director of central intelligence. And there were five different ones over the course of the years. And uh, then I had um, – the directors, a lot of people don't realize DCIs, uh, when they're uh, doing what they're doing, uh, they go abroad much more than people realize. Mm-hmm. And as a result of that, um, we uh, made darn sure that uh, he was well cared for physically, mentally, but uh, most of all, that we didn't let anybody touch him, so to speak, physically, <laughs> mentally. Yeah. Uh, and the directors themselves are sharp as whip and very kind in many respects. So, uh, that's kind of what I would describe that. The book we're talking about is A True American Patriot. The circles that, that you that you draw inside this storyline. I, I love the way that you, it's like you're giving us an invitation to take a sneak peek at, at something that, like you said, we don't know, but you're teaching us as well as entertaining us. Oh, that's very nice to hear. Uh, and some of it's humor along the way uh, towards the second half or maybe the third quarter. Uh, I've made sure, make sure that uh, I put in a certain amount of, of fun <laughs> so people can not only uh, look at and think about certain things that, that I've had in there, but they'll automatically pick up some of the humor, which I think is really important. <laughs> but, it, it, when I, but, but what's great about it is, though, is that sometimes it's like inside humor. Other times it's it's one of those where it's like, why, you know, you you have to stop and reread the paragraph because you're going, he did say that. He did say Understood. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> to make it a spy thriller, because we mm-hmm. all love spies. And I, I, I don't know what the attraction is, except maybe it's just the mystique, the mystery of it all. And, and and going basically undercover to try to figure out things before they happen. Right. That's all correct. In fact, I, to give you an idea of the uh, A True American Patriot, I, what I uh, think about is terrorism yeah. is, is first at large, and that comes back at the end of the book, too. Espionage is, is way, the way you just described uh, exactly, and the U.S. military, as well as um, some uh, some different uh, teams or portions um, with, say, uh, Xi Jinping, and uh, who uh, does a good job of manipulating Kim Jong-un with North Korea. Mm -hmm. So, but this is all wrapped up uh, in there, and um, it makes it interesting, I think. When you do a book like this, and and it is a spy thriller, listeners need to understand that, that means, I mean, this is going to be a summer read, but do you still have to send it to the Pentagon for them to look over it so that you're not releasing anything? Uh, good, good question. And um, the answer to that is I don't do it at the Pentagon, even though I've been out of the agency now for, <laughs> for quite a while. Um, I Anything I have that, I, that I'm producing uh, goes right to the CIA yeah. into a lot of, you know, uh, electronic now and, and the way, you know, what the way this looked at and uh so for example in, in when i when i did about you know five months of it uh so i sent it in and at that time i had uh, done 400 pages wow and uh, <laughs> yeah and I but i also learned that you, you gotta let go of some of it so i did do that but when i sent it into them within about three weeks which by uh, believe it or not um was unbelievable <laughs> that it wasn't going to be a full year. However, um, they they got back and they said, you're good to go. We've looked at it all and um, we're, we're comfortable with it. And then later on, a, a few months after that, um, since I did put it back down to 333, yeah, um, yeah then uh, I got back to them again. I sent it back into them and uh, they looked at it. it, took a little more time to be more specific, but um, they said, okay, you're good to go. And th- so that was very promising and, and very uh, appreciated. All right, writer to writer. I got to talk to you about those those number of pages because my, my last book was 356 and I had to sit down and take out a bunch of pages. How did you uh, know in your heart what to drop? Because, man, come on, you put so much of your love and interest in, into those paragraphs. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think to answer your question, it has to do with um, the, the way I described it is uh, don't don't relieve or, or don't move away the core. Yeah. So, you, you know, you have a certain uh, portion where you're like, OK, that's good. And there's more there. But and, and as you go about that and you look at it and read it a little bit more, you start seeing that, OK, as long as I keep the core, that's why I work that hardest on in any particular, you know, that um you can do that and it's not going to hurt your system in any way. Have you always been a writer because, or is it something that you said one day, Oh man, this, this, it, this is too loud in my heart. I've got to sit down and try to figure this out. Uh, I appreciate that. What uh, the answer is um, the U S military and um, the 125 uh, U S military bases around the world. That's what got me started. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and when I was traveling, I mean, I've, I've uh, clearly and easily have uh, done more uh, countries than uh, probably about five or ten left <laughs> uh, during while well, each director there was, you know, we, we were traveling. People don't understand that, you know, we get them in, we get them out and certain locations. They're hot zones and we're still getting them in or out. <laughs> um, and they're brilliant. And, and they're they're people that uh really care about their countries. So um, having the ability to literally sit and think of uh, a huge number of places that I've been, um, it was not necessarily at, at my call either, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, that, that's that been a big piece of it. That's why I think the terrorism, um, the, the North Korean stuff, the uh, Xi Jinping in, in China, I know a lot of, and I've been to all of these. I'm not just saying, you know, I've watched on TV or I did this or that. I've had to do this, what was the, my job? And and all of my colleagues that uh, were as well. And so seeing troops that are uh, only having about three, four hours a, a week to um, get things done and then continue the very next day, I, I, I thought of that and I realized that um, we d we got very comf comfortable with that in terms of we'd go for uh, the airplanes would be all um, not easy to, to pick yeah. and um, and then and when we were going ten ten days and there were about four countries we were going in and out of real quick and uh, then during that time frame we were lucky if we had three hours during that time frame. So when I realized the agency, the uh, military has been doing this, U.S. military has been doing this all the time and their families and their children, it's hard. It's hard for them because they can't get to be back and then turn around and run back. And So I really feel, I felt for that and um, I still do. And uh, the fictional part, I think, helps me some. <laughs> wow, the way that you describe going into country to country to country, it reminds me so much of, of a conversation I had with Elton John's tour manager because they gave me the opportunity. Do you want to talk with Elton or do you want to talk to the tour manager? Keeping the tour manager in focus, that's what I wanted was him because he's got the ah. stories. Because, I mean, I realized you were protecting somebody, but, man, you had to have planning skills. You, had, you were on the ground. I mean, it's, to me, you've got the better story. <laughs> and I, I think you have um, a very uh, interesting and um, correct uh, way of looking at it. And uh, a lot of times it, it, the directors, um, we they would just look at me saying, you know, they're busy doing what they do. <laughs> a lot of that. <laughs> and then, so when things got really tight and really hard, he would just look at me at each one of them. It's just part. I'm a kid from the Bronx, <laughs> by the way. I should mention that. <laughs> that says it all right there. <laughs> <laughs> there, you, there you have it. And, and I became this person that, uh, you know, they said, no, no. And twice, it's just to give you an idea, I, I, I had spent a lot of time with my family in different embassies around the world and uh, when I wasn't doing uh, this. And um, two instances uh, where the directors said, okay, go ahead, go with family and get, you know, and do it over there in Japan or do it over here in the Middle East and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, in two different instances of about six or seven different countries and uh, the uh, embassies that I was in of those, um, two, in two different instances where the two different uh, uh, DCIs, uh, the one was there for two years and the other one was there for three years. They both called in, uh, called me on the phone in, 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 uh, where, where uh, 
everything had to be done very mm-hmm. carefully mm-hmm. with with the information, right? And and what the information was, the bosses <laughs> independently, but the boss at each time said to me, um, so how's everything going? I said, good. I said, my family's back. You know, it's nice to have that. And he said, okay, you got to come back. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> you know, and and so I thought, okay, well, then I'll come back, you know, as told. And and then I, I can tell them some things that I, I think they would be happy with and the team that was working would do better. And um, what I actually found is when I basically sat down, that was it. I wasn't going to go out anywhere else but where the director was. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's uh, – that's, that has a lot to do with being in so many different countries. To be a fly on the wall in, in the sure. way that when you got off that phone call and you went back into your family, your eyes meeting your wife's eyes, I would love to see that moment because she would have to know in a split second that something was going down. That's absolutely, especially it was, I think it was a, uh, yes, the answer is ex- exactly that. And uh, she, um, fortunately, the children were still young at that time. Yeah. <laughs> so that, uh, you know, but um, it's been an experience, no doubt about it. And, and to, to the extent that the portion that you described and the, uh, once I retired from the agency, um, that's 26 years, I opened up a, a very small, tight company um, that I uh, pulled in a lot of um, Navy SEALs, nice. uh, Green Berets. And, yeah, and these were people that just finished leaving um, the service. Wow. And uh, so I had them for about 10 to 12 years where um, we let, uh, we worked on different um, CEOs and their families um, around the world. Wow. And, but mostly, mostly. In, and, and that was a very... Um, telling experience because it went very similar in ways and then then in other times very different but um did that for about 12 years and uh wow interesting now now that you've released the the spy thriller a true american patriot do you look at the world differently as a writer now in the way that you've got you've got north korea that that is uh uh, sending weapons to the soviet or to russia and and then you've got south korea that's sending uh weapons to uh, ukraine are they not in essence in war, North and South Korea, when they do that kind of stuff? Because as, as a thriller writer like that, I, I would sit there, I'd put spies on the ground in all the countries. and, and, and but, but do you see the world differently like that, where it's like, oh, there's a story here. I'm going to make it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, both uh, both are correct. And um, some of it in my own little <laughs> world, um, uh, many portions of it are just things that came to me. Yeah, uh, I mean, it sounds, it sounds a little bit strange, but um, when you're doing, it's the, the same old thing of where you sit down and you're just not in that day, and you sit there and you sit there and you figure, <laughs> can I get a word out, please? You know, <laughs> and then the, the portions where you sit down and all of a sudden you forgot it's Tuesday when you were when you uh, stepped in yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. That kind of thing. Oh, so, I, I have uh, those moments as a writer where it's like when it's not coming out, I just go, God, this is yours. OK, I'm only here as a tool. You take over. You do what you need to do. But, man, I got you. You got you got to move me. I hear you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's uh, that's very good because it, it lets you know that it, it's a, a part, a sort of part of what we what we've accomplished. The other <laughs> part is just sheer uh, people trying to help you and, and uh, you know. It, it's just interesting. And I, I'll give you an example since we're chatting. One would be that um, I already have a second one in play. Nice. I, I haven't put it out yet, but um, I probably have you know, maybe about 50 or, or uh, 100 uh, lines. But um, I raised because one of the uh, people who was in touch with me and helping me through this, uh, she, she had said to me in the very beginning, uh, she had seen uh, like a chapter two and she said, OK, she said, you're going to be able to do this. This is very good. And uh, I said, well, this back like two and a half years ago. And um, she said to me, I, I want to say one thing to you. I said, sure. And I thought by this time you'll be crumbling it up and throwing it in the <laughs> garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, she said, you're not going to just do one book. You're going to do a tri- trilogy. A oh, trilogy. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And I said, why, why would you think that? And I said, she said, because you can do it. And that's why. And so uh, between you and I, and, and uh, probably no one else that really cares at the moment, um, the one that'll be right behind this one is going to be um, uh, different, and, but um, a, young, a younger version, in mm. a matter of speaking. 
Mm. So, um, so that's kind of how I'm moving it. And then the, the third one, which I know this sounds strange, <laughs> but the third one that I haven't done anything on yet is sitting inside of my brain, <laughs> and I don't have a big brain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I always look at it as that you know, like when when you do like a trilogy, that the, the story itself is still in the tree; it just hasn't become paper yet, but it's there, okay. and, and, and it's, and it's yeah. making its way to you. Yeah, very good, very good. Uh, she, she, I, at a point in time back when, she had said to me, um, she said, why, why wouldn't you do this? And I said, well, you know, I just don't know if I have anything in there. <laughs> and she yeah. And she said, oh, it's in there. She said, you just got to make up your mind of whether you're going to let it out or not. Mm-hmm. She said, it's already in there based on your experience and your life. And uh, that was interesting because it, it kind of made me um, think about it. And I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot. Does your writing discipline include taking long walks and or and or meditating? Because I mean, because as writers, I mean, in reality, you're taking from your body, which creates that emptiness. You've got to fill it with mm-hmm. something. Yes, yes, and that's a very good way to describe it. I for myself, um, I, again, it, it's a little bit similar to what you had mentioned. It, it just came there, mm-hmm. you know. Like, and uh, yeah, there'd be bad days and be good days. But when good days kicked in, um, I didn't. I, I would go just uh, walk in just to clear your head, sort of, you know. Yep, yep. <laughs> and and then uh, you go back, and when you're ready to sit down and do it, it you're more prepared for that. You know, so um, but a lot of it is is uh, been surprising to me. <laughs> now, now that you're getting these books out of trilogy, the, the, sure. my, my main question as a writer is, is how are you going to protect yourself from these A.I.s who seem to be stealing the styles from writers like yourself? There's got to be a way yeah. that's going to protect you so that a computer is not going to recreate you. Right. I hear you. And that is uh, exactly what's going on. In the, but the, the piece that you're referring to is exactly right at the same time. Uh, and, and I believe that what we're having now with the AI and it, it's you, you can see some of it if you have any value, you know, anybody. But uh, I think that they are withholding. Um, so that no one chops it all up into nothing. Mm -hmm. They're doing the exact opposite. They're saying, well, you know, we can show you this. We can show you that. Once they've done that, you start realizing that they can do a hell of a lot more than just the AI that we've seen on the TV or radios, you know? And I thought, hey, this is going to be quite interesting. And um, But the flip side of that for my little world is the uh, possibility of World War III, the possibility of China, Russia. Those in increments to compare to the AI. China is smart enough to go ahead and, and build those quick. We are too. Yeah. But um, I, I, my, my own experience is that it's uh, both of those are being moved quickly mm-hmm. and, and continuously because uh, the future has to do with a lot of the technology um, and a lot of our people, including ourselves maybe. We, we, you're going to have to really have it um, almost like verbally finished in your head before you even sit down. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of yeah, interesting, right? Well, in spirit, my father was sitting right here with us and like, you know, I'm sure he's in his own way telling you, thank you for writing this modern day Western for him because he loves this kind of stuff. Uh, that's outstanding, and I uh, please tell him the best. Absolutely. You know? You'd be uh, brilliant today, okay, sir? Thank you very much. uh, It's a pleasure chatting with you.